Here's a real quick video on the information of net ionic equations to wrap up our units on chemical reactions, uh, unit 7. So we've done all our reaction types, and now we need to get into this idea of what's really going on in the chemistry, or is there a way that we can take the, the big reactions and break them down and kind of get rid of all the spectators or extra stuff that we don't really uh, worry about. Um, to do this, we want to talk about just chemistry that's done in solution. So we're primarily talking about double displacement reactions and single displacement reactions. And then for the purpose of our unit, we're just going to focus on double displacement reactions. Uh, this also occurs in single displacement, but our focus will be on double displacement reaction types. Um, one thing you need to realize is that when chemistry is done in solution, ionic compounds actually separate into their different ions. So they're not actually together when they're in solution. You can see them as kind of like breaking apart. Um, I kind of see it as if you're going like to a high school dance, you go there with your girlfriend, go there with your boyfriend, but when you get there, you really don't stay together and only dance with each other the entire night. What you do is you break apart and kind of dance as a big group anyway. So it's kind of like the same thing for ionic compounds. When they get dissolved into water, they actually break apart into separate ions and they are actually floating around separately. Um, because they're all floating around separately, some of those ions really don't do anything. They're there, but nothing really happens with them. So we call those spectators, uh, or ions that are part of the process but don't do any chemistry. So the idea behind net ionic equations is to eliminate or to remove those spectators. Okay? So we're going to show you a little video on the screen here. Uh, and that video is going to show you basically the process by how ionic compounds dissolve, and you kind of see how they actually break apart there. So here we go. When an ionic substance such as sodium chloride is placed in water, water molecules interact with the ions on the surface. If the salt is soluble, the attractive interactions with water molecules overcome the ionic attractions within the lattice. The solvated ions move off the surface and become separated in solution. Notice that water molecules cluster about the anions with the hydrogens directed toward the negatively charged ion. On the other hand, water molecules interact with the positively charged cations through the lone pairs of electrons on the oxygens. Okay, so you can see as you, in the video that the actual chlorines and sodiums, the pluses and minuses in the video, actually broke apart and separated. So if they separate and they're in solution, and then after the reaction, if they're still in solution, they really didn't do anything. So they're called spectators, and we can actually remove them from the equation. Okay? So we're going to change uh, screens here, and then we're going to, we're going to work out uh, basically rewriting a net ionic equation. So what we have, if you take a look, we have sodium phosphate in solution, and we have copper nitrate in solution. Um, the reality is, when these are in solution, the sodium is no longer attached to the phosphate, and the copper is really no longer attached to the nitrate. We write it this way because initially, when they're in their powder form, they were attached to each other. But to dissolve in water means to break apart that crystal lattice and to actually have separate particles. Now, when they react, we make solid copper phosphate. So the copper phosphate actually has re-solidified and is now stuck together again. But the sodium nitrate, because it stayed in solution, we still have sodium ions floating around, not attached to anything, and we still have nitrate not attached to anything. So we can take this equation and rewrite it like this. Now if you take a look, it looks kind of complex, but all we really did was separate it out. So if you look, over here, we had three sodium groupings, um, and we had two sets of those. So the net result is when this thing dissolves in water, you get six independent sodium plus one ions floating around in the water. They're still in solution. You have two groups of phosphate ions floating around in water. Remember when polyatomic ions dissolve, because they're actually molecularly bonded, they actually stay together. So you don't get phosphorus and oxygen separate. Phosphate stays together as one grouping because it's actually a covalently bonded polyatomic ion. So we have six sodiums floating around. We have two phosphates floating around. And all we do there is we had two times three for the six and two times one because we had one PO4 for the phosphate. The AQ stays because they're still in solution. We had three copper ions floating around and we have six nitrates. So we have three times the two NO3s or six nitrates floating around. Okay? 
So once you dissolve an ionic compound in solution, here's what you really have. You have all these ions that are actually separate from each other. They're not together anymore. Now, once you mix them together, the copper and the phosphate eventually are going to run into each other. All chemistry happens when the collisions happen. So as these are flying around in solution, the copper is going to slam into some phosphate, and when they do, they will actually attach to each other and start making that sound. Now that happens very quickly in most cases. So um, we pour the two together and we saw in both our labs that they almost instantly turned into this white powderish or this yellow or blue powder in our solutions. So it happens very quickly that they hit each other because they're moving very quickly inside the solution and they start to solidify or they start to build their own solid crystals. So that process actually combines the copper with the phosphate and now they're no longer in solution but they are a solid. So they aren't separate, they are now hooked together. The sodium, it was flying around in solution over here, and afterwards it's still just flying around in solution over here. The nitrate was moving around in solution over here, it's still moving around in solution over here. So even though they're part of the chemistry, chemical reaction, the reality is we had sodium ions, we still have sodium ions. We had nitrate ions, we still have nitrate ions. So they're not part of the chemistry. Okay? It's kind of like if you go to a hockey game. You know, the hockey players are out on the, on the ice and they're playing the game and they're performing and they're working hard and they're part of the game. Or if you go to a performance and you're sitting in the stands watching, you know, our encore performance, the actors up there and the musicians and singers, they're doing all the work. You're just a spectator. You're there, but you're not really doing anything. Same thing here. Sodium's there. It's not doing anything. It's just a spectator. Okay? So we call these spectator ions because they're there, but they're not part of the actual chemistry. Very much like a spectator is there, but not part of the actual football game or performance. So sodium's a spectator, nitrate's a spectator. They're not part of the chemistry. So when you do a net ionic, you don't actually have to keep those in. You get rid of them and don't show those. So what we can say is that the sodium and the nitrate, we can cancel out. Now, you only can cancel out stuff that's identical on both sides, which means you have the same number coefficient out front, the same charge, and the same state of matter. So if we had 6Na1+, and this wasn't aqueous, it wouldn't work. Okay, So they have to be identical, 6Na1 plus Aq, 6Na1 plus Aq. They're identical, they can cancel out. Now, if it happens that you have six and four, you can cancel out four of the six. We won't see that happen, but you may see that happen at a college level uh, chemistry class. So in the future, you may see where you're canceling out two or three of them and not all of them at a time. And that does happen in redox type reactions. If you look, we cancel these out. Well, we don't cancel out the phosphate because it was a, a negative three in aqueous, and now it's part of a solid. So we can't cancel the phosphate and we can't cancel the copper for the same reason. So once we cancel these out and we remove them, what's left over is two PO4s, aqueous, three coppers, aqueous, making the copper phosphate solid. So this right here is our net ionic equation for that. Okay, guys, uh, we can do some more practice with this on worksheet number four. All you have to do is go to all the double displacement reactions that work and turn them into net ionic. Also, on our last part of our lab day, uh, you guys did the eight equations. Any of those that were actual reactions and not a no reaction, you can go back now and turn those into net ionic also. Thank you.